Hey, you guys, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel, Physics Sergi, the one stop solution for taking an extra lead in your JE mains and JE advanced preparation. And here we are in JE mains debated question series. And this one is slightly different from the usual stuff I dish out in this particular channel, right? As you could see on the board, this is a question from 2019 April shift examination of JE mains, in which it's not more about the physics of the question, it's more about the maths, the kind of options that were given in the question, what was NTA thinking in testing in this particular question, and how can students actually approach the final answer without the calculator being provided in the exam. Okay, so here's the formal wording. Uh, I would request you to actually pause the video here, try this question out in one minute time, which is the usual time you're expected to solve these particular questions in the exam, and do come back for the explanation of how to approach approach this particular problem. As I said, there's not much physics which is difficult in this question. And you could see in the four options, he's expecting you to answer up till the two decimal places in the final answer, okay? <clears throat> four identical particles of mass M are located at the corners of a square of side A. What should be their speed if each of them revolves under the influence of the other's gravitational field in a circular orbit circumscribing the square? Pretty straightforward that four particles are there, they're rotating in a circle, and that is a circumcircle of this particular square. You're supposed to calculate the speed of each one so that they are rotating under the gravitational influence. And you could see the square root of G capital M by A, capital G is the uh, universal gravitational constant. So well, the theory would be very, very clear. So let's get rid of the theory part first, very quickly. So very simple solution, you take up one of the particles at the origin and assume that particle B is going to have gravitational influence from A, D and C, where gravitational attraction has been written in vector form, right, in this manner. So the A and C at 90 degrees will add up with a root two times of this number and this D will have a slightly lesser force because there's a larger distance and vector sum of these three forces would be the centripetal force. Right. When you take the vector sum of all the forces, you have to equate it to mv square by the radius r, which is this distance, which is nothing but a by root 2. So pretty straightforward. You get up till this point without any problem, but the answer doesn't give you uh, an expression like this. He is expecting you to decimalize the answer. Okay. So, but the final step can't be this simple. This is a question, uh, solution I picked up from internet. And from this step, I think going to this step is not so straightforward. Some of you might have figured it out, but let's try to hit the nail on the coffin. Okay, so 1.16, how do you approach from this point to this point? It's a very important lesson because I've seen many other questions in the examination follow such rules. So here's an important calculation trick that would help you in the exam. When you're supposed to calculate the square root of this expression, which I borrowed from the previous page, you need to calculate. I have written this as root two divided by four, not much difficult. And root two, I, if I think of it as 1.414, and since, Looking at the options, I need only up till two decimal places. 1.414 divided by four, I'll write it as 0 0.35. That rules out one definite answer, which is that um, 1.35 that he gave in the option A is definitely not the answer because we are supposed to calculate the 1.35's square root, okay? Now, uh, the next step is to understand in this kind of situations where power is asked and uh, we look at the binomial expansion of a fractional power, one plus x whole power p by q. Here, the p by q is half. So the usual notation most of the students understand is to take the first two terms, which is one plus p by q times of x. Whereas in the, there is a second term also and a third term that you should understand from your binomial theorem classes, where you'd have, if this is n, this is n into n minus one by two factorial, and then you have n into n minus one into n minus two divided by three factorial, so on and so forth. You'll have higher terms also, which keep on going up till infinity. So here I have written up till the uh, third term with first two terms, if you observe it, if I take this as half into 0.35, I end up getting 1.17, which is not in the options. Then the dilemma for the students was uh, to have whether an answer which is more than 1.17 or less than 1. It is very close to 1.17, but can you have the courage to actually mark something greater than 1.17 as 1.21? That I think you should be very, very careful. And in a future exam, there could be one of the options with 1.17 itself. Okay, so 1.16 and 1.17 both are given, which one you are supposed to mark. Okay, so some students actually thought that answer is more than 1.17 
1.17, so they went for option C, which is 1.21, which is wrong because you could see that even though this is a plus something, if you substitute half in this particular scenario, you'll get a negative number here. That negative number is minus one by eight, which can be written in this particular fashion. Okay, so the value of this, if you substitute half here, half into half divided by two, which is minus one by eight. So that would be 0. 0.0125 in this scenario. Okay, so when 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 you um sorry 0.125 minus one by eight, right? So minus 0.125 multiplied by x square, which is 0 0.35 whole square. Okay, right. So that number, since it is a negative value, is going to reduce the answer, and one of the redu reduced answer would be close to 1.16. You might again wonder, why can't it reduce this decimal? That is one. Why is it only reducing the seven? Remember, high order terms, once you take, would be smaller than the lower order terms. Okay, so the, the most judicious choice for your answer among the four options would be 1.16. So this is how you can approach from looking at the options. Answer is slightly less than 1.17 at the second decimal place. So the best possible bet that you can have without the calculator in the exam is the option B, which actually matches once you check with the calculator. So having an idea of a Taylor series or binomial expansion of a fractional power, all these things would be important. And you could see some of the three or four questions in 2019 JE NTA uh, database had these kind of things, which can repeat in your future examination. So please do have this trick up your armory so that you can take a lead and uh, 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 tough it out against your competition. Okay, so also do check out the rest of the JE mains debated questions. I'll keep coming with up the, these questions till your exams and different shifts get over. Also other important series which whose links are in the description below. So please do check them out also. And uh, please do spread this channel so that I can keep coming up with uh, nice questions ranging from the JE mains level to JE advanced and also the Olympiad situations. Okay, so uh, thank you for staying this long and see you in the next one.